Within the darkness of the far future, many mysteries exist. Unknown horrors threaten humanity at every step, and the threat of total annihilation hangs over every world like an ever-present Sword of Damocles. While humanity and the Imperium face these threats head-on, things have been ever worsening in the recent centuries as the galaxy entered the 42nd millennium. And so this raises the possibility that at some point threats could appear with such severity that they threaten not only the outlying worlds of humanity, but in fact Terra and the Emperor of Mankind himself. Or, given the current state of the galaxy with vast warp rips, who knows when further darkness might emerge and completely envelop more of real space. And this is not to mention, of course, the reawakening of the Necrons, who appear to be on the verge of fully realising their return to the galaxy, and the ever-threatening tendrils of the Tyranid Menace. The Emperor, in his holy wisdom, while having, of course, faith in his Astartes that they would protect humanity, foresaw the need to create what is presumed to be something of a failsafe, and it is one of the most closely guarded secrets in the Imperium. And this is because it would be reasonable to say that it is likely that no one in the Imperium actually knows the true details of this secret, for it is known as the Terminus Decree. Now on the one hand, thankfully mentions of the Terminus Decree are actually extremely minimal, which makes it easier to track down information about it, because there is so very little of it. It's mentioned only in the three Grey Knights Codex, and beyond that you can only forge speculative links to very small mentions in other books, which may or may not be related to it. The Terminus Decree is simply a piece of parchment that is said to contain critical instructions given by the Emperor himself and sealed in an ancient lockbox. Its location is only known to the Grey Knights within their secret chambers on Terra, although it is rumoured to be the tomb of the Emperor's closest aide, Malkador the Sigilite. And it was also said that only a supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights was bestowed with the knowledge of how to open it, because the box is locked by a golden seal. Interestingly enough, this matches exactly another golden seal found in only one other known location in the Imperium, the Golden Throne of the Emperor. It is said that the Terminus Decree must only be opened when all hope for humanity appears lost, and it is speculated that should this situation ever arise which will compel a Grey Knight Grand Master to unlock the box, the instructions contained within will enable some event of such a magnitude that they may hold the key to humanity's salvation, or for all we know, its complete destruction. It has been widely speculated that the Terminus Decree contains orders to kill the Emperor sitting atop of his golden throne, and thereby releasing him from his psychic prison and allowing his subsequent rebirth. It is then assumed that he would of course become the salvation for humanity. Depending on which school of inquisitional thought you may subscribe to, you may know that many believe the Emperor does not exist anymore within the Golden Throne, and that the psychic sacrifices are there simply to power it, as well as keeping the Astronomicon fueled. But the Emperor himself has already departed his physical body, and now exists only within the warp waiting to be reborn. Now until recently, the Terminus Decree was considered to be an absolute last resort, Given though the dire state of affairs the Imperium has found itself in during the final days of M41, the prospect of using this potentially destructive force has now been given serious consideration. And this has been attributed to the technically current Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights one, Kaldor Drago. Now Drago became the current Supreme Grand Master when the demon Primarch Mortarion of the Death Guard Legion killed the former. Drago was able to banish Mortarion into the warp by speaking his true name. Now just to note, a demon's true name is different to those who were formerly mortals. A demon's true name will bind it to those who have spoken its name, and this will confuse and disorientate the demon, allowing them to be more easily banished back into the warp. For former mortals such as Chaos Marines or Demon of Primarchs, speaking their original mortal name appears to function in much the same way. Uriel Ventress of the Ultramarines was able to also weaken a demon prince in this manner. Unfortunately, Supreme Grandmaster Drago ended up becoming lost and trapped within the warp itself, and it is said that he was now condemned to walk in the formless wastes for eternity. Being a Supreme Grandmaster of the Grey Knights though, Drago would not waste this time, and despite being alone and continually assailed by chaotic entities, he was able to slay greater demons and lay waste to their fortresses within the warp a huge testament to the devastating power and uncorruptibility of the Grey Knights. However, after the Great Rift had torn itself through the galaxy, 
Drago discovered he was somehow able to return into sections of the Materium for periods of time. In this time, it is said that he would then appear to each of the current Grand Masters of the Grey Knights and would impart onto them the knowledge of how to open the Terminus Decree, and that also it may be time to consider its use. So what is contained within the knowledge of the Terminus Decree? It is impossible to say with certainty. The only thing that we can be near to certain of is that it will enable an event of potentially cataclysmic change. We can speculate that because of its nature, in that it is only to be used when facing the darkest of times, its instructions are likely highly specific. It seems to me that Drago is actually being a little bit hasty, because it is true that the Imperium is facing dark times, darker than it has for millennia. But at the same time, we have seen the return of one of the Emperor's Primarchs, something few thought they would ever live to see again, not to mention the rise of the Primaris and various other new developments like Mad Scientist Call turning out new tech faster than anyone thought ever possible. Call is even, in my opinion, leaning towards raising contentious possibilities like reapproaching the concepts of technological exploration, and that this could become a new dawn of an age of humanity more in line with what the Emperor had originally wanted, that is to say, a society based on science and learning. Although that obviously conflicts somewhat with both the Mechanicus hardline and the Ecclesiarchy. So, the beginning of M42 are contentious times, but the absolute darkest of days that warrant using the Terminus Decree that's debatable. Of course, it would certainly help matters if we thought that Supreme Grandmaster Drago had any concept of just what the Terminus Decree contained, but there is no evidence of that either. So despite having no evidence of what it truly contains, when you run through the possibilities of what it could say, you find yourself coming back to the possibility of somehow removing the Emperor, or his complete death to enable him to then be reborn again and again, because really, what else could you do within the Imperium to instigate any very major defence protocol that would save it other than this? Now, as I've noted a few times recently, it brings us to thinking about the differing ideologies of the Inquisition that I recently covered, and how some within the Inquisition consider that the Emperor has already long since left his mortal shell, now exists already on the spiritual plane of the warp, awaiting a suitable vessel to inhabit. On the other hand, knowing the Emperor is a perpetual, similar to the Primarch Vulcan, it seems more likely that the Emperor might simply manifest. As I noted again previously, the concept of what it means to be a perpetual is somewhat poorly defined in the 40k verse, and it is even less well defined the means by which they are seemingly reconstituted for want of a better verb. Now I should note that there are some significant spoilers to the novel Old Earth involving the resolution of Vulcan's journey from here on, so be advised. However, we do have some descriptions about Perpetual's regeneration in the Primarch Vulcan, when he was continually tortured by Conrad Kerr's traitor Primarch of the Night Lords. Now, Kerr's personally cut off Vulcan's head, ripped out his throat, stabbed him through the chest, tore him limb from limb. Separately, he had Vulcan eviscerated, shot with hundreds of bolters at close range, left in the vent shaft of a starship engine, and even thrown into empty space naked. Now, each time Vulcan died, his body would regenerate completely, leaving Kurz absolutely furious. Vulcan was finally able to escape by teleporting himself to Macrag, or at least its upper atmosphere, although he then became burned to a charred corpse by re-entering the atmosphere. Over a series of days, Vulcan's body again began to regenerate, eventually returning him to life. Now, until this time, Vulcan had not fully understood his powers, but finally having realised them when he would fight Kurz again, he was able to use his powers of regeneration when he focused mentally upon this. And so he was even able to regenerate from decapitation actively, extremely quickly, and so he was able to continue fighting. This is where the complex figure, though, of John Grammaticus enters the fray. Now, John Grammaticus is a very difficult figure to explain in short. But simply put, he is another human perpetual who was part of what would be called the Cabal. And this was the curious Cabal which is sometimes mentioned that sought the total destruction of chaos. And I will likely have to cover this 
probably soon enough. The Cabal really believed its, its goal was the complete destruction of Chaos by any means necessary. They believed it to be the most damaging thing. And so they thought that by allowing Horus to be victorious, that this would actually enable the destruction of Chaos because they believed that once humanity itself was totally destroyed as a result, then this would ultimately also lead to the destruction of Chaos because once humanity is out of the way, there's nothing left to feed Chaos and it should kind of burn itself out. Orthran of the Eldar would speak to John Grammaticus and explain to him that this was not so, or it was not certain, that this would likely not lead to only the destruction of humanity, but likely also the fall of the entire galaxy. Grammaticus would not kill Vulcan, but through a series of events he would end up in a deep coma. As I say, there is a lot more to this story and the story of John Grammaticus, but that's for another day. Recently via Saturnine we learn a great deal more about the Perpetuals. However, there is an undercurrent running throughout the book which is all about lies and false remembrance of history. So although there are things which on face value seem devastating and being great revelations, I felt in Saturnine it's important not to lean too heavily on individual accounts from characters. With that said, it does give us a potentially further reinforcement about the Emperor's perspective and goals. Additionally, depending on how you might want to choose to interpret it in the bigger picture, and I don't want to get too heavily into this right now, but it is noted how the Emperor will again and again appear to lie and deal with matters in an extremely arrogant ends justifying the means approach. And we've seen this with him right from the very beginning. In False Gods and so on, it sadly adds weight to this overall picture that the Emperor is far more disturbing than the holier than thou image painted by his most fanatical worshippers. Also, dependent on your perspective, we've seen the Emperor make repeated misjudgments, or on the other side of the coin, you might want to take these as being carefully disguised actions that are still part of some grand master plan, but generally many of his judgments appear to actually undermine his credibility as an all-knowing being, who is instead led primarily by his own self-righteous arrogance, and we know that he doesn't know everything, he even says this himself. A lot of what we have learned regarding the Emperor continues to support actually my view that he was, as we already know, always present throughout humanity's history and likely had some influence, but that it wasn't until the catastrophic failure of the Golden Age and the Dark Age of Technology, and we don't know how much he pushed that as well, I've sometimes thought whether the Golden Age of the Dark Age of Technology was in fact actually some effort by the Emperor to push forward and achieve what he had tried to achieve with the Imperium, and maybe this was his first failed experiment. But that after the Age of Strife happened, the Emperor decided basically enough was enough and he would dispense with any sense of subtlety and take full and total control of things. This is of course obvious and clear for all to see, but what's less known is to just what ends the Emperor would go in order to achieve this. Saturnine lays out some of this, but there are clues for us all throughout the reference material. I think perhaps most notably in Dark Imperium, which contained a lot of suggestion about doubt and perception around the Emperor. For example, Gulliman has several realizations about the truth of the Emperor having returned back to a very different Imperium than the one he remembered in the aftermath of the heresy. It's all shrouded still in vague interpretations, but you get the impression that the Emperor is far from what he presented himself as to others, and that leaves worrying questions about his motivations and we'll talk about this more as well. Some of the revelations that we've seen there about perpetuals that as I say would probably be more appropriate to talk about separately, it gives us this sense that the Emperor was so singularly focused on achieving his end goal that he would do almost anything and sacrifice anything in order to achieve them. I've come to think that potentially if he thought this could not be achieved then he was prepared to in fact end everything. The fact that the Emperor thought if Horus took terror then all was lost. You can interpret this in several ways. Do you assume that by this he meant that humanity would be lost, or was it more that his own personal goals would be crushed? Again, when he speaks to Vulcan about this on the face of it, you assume that the Emperor is lamenting the potential destruction of humanity, but what if it was simply the crushing of his own ambitions? Now, as for Vulcan, he would recover, and using a talisman he had apparently forged but had no memory of doing so, would travel to Terra via the webway. And this talisman acted as a compass for him to navigate through the vast maze of space between space corridors. 
This journey would be extremely difficult, involving many battles with demons and enemies, but finally Ulthran of the Eldar would greet Vulcan and guide him not through the webway portal of the throne room as the Emperor had sealed this, but to the outside gates of the Imperial Palace, and here Vulcan was taken by Custodes to meet with the Emperor himself. And this is where the Emperor revealed that it was he himself who had been guiding Vulcan back to Terra, and that it was in fact even his will that had sparked Vulcan to create his great thunder hammer and also the talisman known as the Talisman of the Seven Hammers. Now the Emperor explained how this had been Vulcan's true purpose, to forge the talisman and oversee its installation into the Golden Throne. Now for those who are unaware, behind the Golden Throne on Terra lies the entrance to the Emperor's webway portal, and ever since the heresy it has contained as Malkador described it, it is hell. Hell given form. Essentially demons assaulted it and have been trying to break through ever since the heresy. Now, once Vulcan installed the talisman to the Golden Throne, it became permanently locked in and now would trigger should the Golden Throne ever fail. Now, many assume that it is this which is connected to the Terminus Decree, this talisman. For one thing, it takes the form of a golden seal, which sounds very similar to the seal which locks the box containing the decree. Could these two things somehow be linked? that perhaps one golden seal could trigger the other. This is perhaps one of the most popular theories, and the reason for that is likely because it involves the potential for the Emperor's rebirth, which is why I wanted to lay out the whole how and why the talisman eventually reached the Golden Throne, as well as the perpetual nature of Vulcan, to understand that theoretically the Emperor should be equally capable of regenerating himself and quickly. Now, there are many theories as to why the Emperor couldn't regenerate so easily. Some said that he had kind of had to purge himself of all of his love and goodness in order to be able to kill Horus, and that by doing this, it somehow limited his abilities. There are others who just say, well, you know, when he was fighting Horus, he was really fighting all of the Chaos Gods, and so he received such a devastating wound that this is why he is unable to regenerate from it, and therefore he probably needs to be killed to be able to be properly reborn, and that he wouldn't be able to just regenerate. On the other hand, it could simply be that being atop of the Golden Throne is leeching so much of his power and energy because we know it takes a gigantic amount of focus and force to keep the webway portal closed behind the Golden Throne, not to mention, of course, also being involved in the Astronomicon. But all of this, again, is extremely speculative. Now, to be clear as well, the description of the Terminus Decree states that the exact nature of the document is unknown, and the only clue to its contents lies in the box's golden seal, found only in one place in all the Imperium's scattered worlds, the Emperor's Golden Throne. So, this talisman theory remains a possibility, but I find myself not completely buying it, and here's why. For one thing, it seems way too obvious, and for the other simple reason, it just also makes little sense, and that actually seems fairly obvious to me if you think it all the way through. For starters, why wouldn't the Emperor have imparted this knowledge to other Loyalist Primarchs? I suppose, arguably, the Grey Knights are meant to be considerably purer, more trustworthy even than their Primarchs, especially against the forces of Chaos, which the Emperor was extremely worried about towards the end of the Heresy. Yet the Emperor was basically interred before he saw the Grey Knights project come to fruition, so how could he know that that was definitely going to be successful? Or that there couldn't be some other disastrous situation much further down the line? Another thing for me is that Vulcan's talisman seemed very specifically designed for use during a very short period at the end of the heresy, when the Emperor was uncertain how things would end. He wanted that brought because he wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen and he wanted a failsafe. So I think it's quite a stretch to imagine that then written on the Terminus Decree would be instructions to trigger that, because, oh no, now you've destroyed Terra and the Astronomicon. So now the Imperium are really screwed and it's not that apparent how it would help anything at all, apart from of course, yes, killing the Emperor. Now, the only reason you could argue for the Grey Knights to trigger the activation of the Talisman would be that it destroys not only the Emperor incinerating him, but also the whole of Terra, and then presumably the demons as they try to breach the newly opened web portal, which also it would be assumed would be destroyed thereafter. So in doing so, this would enable the Emperor to, we presume, reappear, as he would be able to as a perpetual, we assume, because even Vulcan was able to appear after apparently being vaporised. So the Emperor returning would of course be a huge gain for the Imperium, it would however come at the sacrifice of Terra, and all the knowledge and bureaucratic necessities that are held there, 
not to mention the vast amounts of Archaea tech, including very likely some extremely valuable items held by the Emperor, his entire laboratory works and all manner of things are there. We know the Mechanicus took a lot of things to Mars, but there are undoubtedly prizes beyond imagination still held on and below Terra itself. And then all of this still doesn't address the much bigger problem that would arise, which is that prior to the Astronomicon being constructed, space travel was significantly limited. So if the Grey Knights trigger this talisman and it does destroy everything on Terra, including, we presume, the Astronomicon, this would absolutely cripple the Imperium. It wouldn't help it at all, cutting off any movement of Imperial forces, supplies and the majority of communications. The Imperium has survived breaks in the Astronomicon before now, it did when the huge warp tear occurred through the galaxy recently, but this would likely be far worse than that, far bigger of a problem. The Emperor constructed the Astronomicon around M30, and at the time it was the single biggest structure on Terra, so to build it he had to draft much of the planet's entire population. So this is not something that they could quickly reconstruct, especially given the fact Terra would have now been turned to ashes, not to mention would they even know how to do it. So, even if the Emperor were to reappear in a relatively short period of time, and also he may not require some purest of pure holy vessel to do so, he might just coalesce somewhere. But ultimately, it's not immediately clear how this would solve or improve the bigger issue or bigger problem. Plus, it also somewhat asks the question, if the key thing you want to achieve here is the death of the Emperor so he can be reborn, why not just have the Terminus Decree say that? It's certainly questionable if the Custodes would allow it, but surely if that's what you're wanting to achieve, instructions to that end are going to be preferable to incinerating the planet and destroying the Astronomicon. I mean, you would hope that the Grey Knights by now, they're a full force, they would be able to keep the gateway in the throne room contained, at least until the Emperor returned, and could probably contain the situation by either sitting again upon the throne, or devising some other way around the problem. Either way, it seems like if you're wanting to achieve the death of the Emperor, you could do that without having to destroy the entire planet. The Emperor ultimately took humanity down a path of his own making, not of its own natural development, and given the devastation he unleashed on the galaxy, who knows what horror is contained within the Terminus Decree, a final order written by a being willing to achieve his goals by any means necessary, even if it means the extinction of planets, the slaughter of billions, and experiments that defy all levels of moral and ethical sensibility. What would such a being deem appropriate as a final terminal decree? Now, the Emperor being given some form of death to enable his rebirth is the most popular of theories, and for good reason, it has some reasonable lore weight behind it in the descriptions. But this is also partly what kind of irks me. Because, in truth, we have no way of knowing what the Terminus Decree dictates. So I find the link between Vulcan's golden talisman and this seal on the supposed box to be reasonably spurious. However, it is hard to ignore the fact that it specifically states that the seal is only found on one other place, the Golden Throne, except couldn't we read this as simply meaning it relates to an order of the Emperor and not necessarily being very specifically linked to Vulcan's talisman. But even if there was some idea about Golden Seal on the Emperor's throne, I think what's more possible is that when the piece about the Terminus Decree was first described, it couldn't have possibly known how things were then going to be described seven years later in Old Earth, and so perhaps this is why the two things I think don't seem to really gel or make sense to me. So what else could the Terminus Decree be? Well obviously whatever your imagination can consider. It could be that the Emperor authorises the use of AI and perhaps even instructs on how well this could be accomplished. After all it is said that the Terminus Decree is only to be used when all hope is lost and they will either save mankind or doom it to oblivion. Similarly, it could be some wildly powerful Dark Age technology that the Emperor has saved for precisely this purpose. It could be some form of instruction for the Imperium to ally with its specific enemy or form some pact to destroy the greater threat facing the Galaxy of Chaos. There are hints that this is what happened during the War in Heaven, where either the Necron, the Eldar or their combined efforts sealed the warp off from real space as it was becoming too dangerous. In fact, it's entirely possible that this current warp rip which is occurring through the galaxy may well be the original tear in space which was present during that time in the early galaxy in the War in Heaven, because we know that the Eldar sort of talked about being able to move and bathe in the warp, so I've always had this belief that the warp was kind of open, like this tear in real space is occurring right now in the galaxy, and that it was sealed up, so maybe this is being 
torn apart once again and that in actuality this is what the Necron understand, this is why they're trying to potentially, I think, reseal it. On the other hand, it could be something far less dramatic. Although Vulcan's talisman was meant to bring a highly destructive firestorm to Terra, it was also said that it guided him through the webway. Although the Emperor also partly inferred that this was his doing, but still, it could simply be that his instructions relate to taking humanity into the webway, and that the Emperor decides this is the only safe place, because it's speculated this was one of his possible intentions for humanity all along. I want to get into that in another video, but it might not be such a stretch to suggest this is a possible final option if things get that bad for the Imperial especially given humanity's ongoing psychic development it might enable them to use the webway more than they currently realize. Now as I said even though it doesn't sit with me particularly well it does seem like the golden seal and the terminus decree description in itself can be fairly interpreted as meaning put an end to me. But that's not the interesting part really it's what happens after that point that's debatable because I don't think the Emperor would want Terra incinerated unless it had already been swarmed by the darkness of chaos or perhaps the Tyranids or whatever. More likely, it is that the Grey Knights, as I speculated, would have to hold the line until the Emperor was able to reappear, so to, to try and salvage things. However, there is another twist on this that I think is also possible, because it's often asked and suggested why there are no good or more positive gods born into the warp, and my thinking has always been that there was never enough collective good focused with enough power to really enable that to happen, or that if it had happened, the other Chaos Gods would crush and devour it before it had any chance to really develop, and that was true for the largest time in humanity's history. However, for the past 10,000 years, humanity has been becoming ever more passionate, more religious and focused about the Emperor as a deity, and worshipping as so. Now when we think about the Emperor, there is a lot of interesting history and mystery that surrounds him. For example, it's still debated just what kind of deal the Chaos Gods made with the Emperor. We also know that, and I'll say it again, according to some theories in the Inquisition, the Emperor may have already left his mortal shell. It's actually reinforced by Gilliman when he interacts with the Emperor after merging from his long stasis and taking control of the Imperium. And Gilliman describes how the Emperor is not at all as he once was. In fact, it's far worse. Gunnerman describes in Dark Imperium that now the Emperor can no longer hide his true self from him, that over 10,000 years it has reduced his ability to hide this. He even describes him simply not as a father but as a being. The Primarch even considers to himself how the Emperor did not love his sons. He says they were things. Gunnerman, all his brothers, were nothing but a means to an end. We know this about the Emperor, but Gunnerman essentially throughout Dark Imperium understands how the Emperor has lied continuously, which by the way I have said repeatedly, and that the Imperium is founded on these lies. Gulliman realises that the Emperor and himself are essentially tyrants without really having chosen to be, but simply by necessity. And he describes that conversing with the Emperor was like talking to a star, and that his humanity is now all but gone. The Emperor loved no single individuals, not even his own Primarchs, despite what he may have said or appeared to them at the time. Gulliman even observes how he is unable to remember clearly the size of the Emperor when he revisits, confuses him to try and remember this, and so we get some sense of the Emperor's deception. He also notes how the Emperor's sword somehow appears to be exactly the right size for him, but he remembers the Emperor being far bigger. It slightly suggests that as we long suspected, the Emperor's power and size are psychic projections to make himself appear more daunting and impressive but that now, having existed for some 10,000 years as a deteriorating corpse, he can no longer create this illusion around himself or for Gulliman, or perhaps he just knows it's unnecessary. So Gulliman, by gaining this understanding about what the Emperor is and has become, he realises that he retains only threads of his humanity, that most of what remained has left his mortal shell. This is what the Inquisition believe, it's what I've said repeatedly, sorry to repeat myself again, but the idea being that he's transcended to this other existence, likely the warp. And the reason I say this again is because what that does is helps us to understand things like the faith, which I described in my previous video. Still maintain that based on all the other evidence as we've seen, that the sororitas and the ecclesiarchical faith is tied to the warp and that the emperor, having transcended to that place, is providing power to them. That's why I wanted to note this. Now, I was glad to see that so many people basically agreed that the narrative which contradicted this in prior seemed to be essentially bad writing. It just doesn't make any sense. Given everything that we know, that situation just didn't make sense. But what about the Terminus Decree? 
what is my point in relation to all this? What about all this stuff about the Emperor transcending? What's it all about? Well, perhaps the Terminus Decree will not enable the Emperor to be reborn, or at least not in the way we understand it. Now, I'll freely admit this is quite far-fetched speculation on my part, but what if we considered how the original Chaos Gods were formed? They essentially took a long time to coalesce to come together, thousands of years. But in this time, they were gradually emerging until finally they were awoken in the warp over thousands of years. Now we already know the Emperor is incredibly powerful. How might it be if it were through the worship of the Emperor? And again, I will note, worship is not an emotion specifically, but imagine more like the love for the Emperor, the devotion, the collective positive loyalty, the need enabled through faith that somehow has been fueling the Emperor while he straddles the material and immaterial planes. We've talked a little about faith in the warp, and from Gulliman's descriptions of the Emperor, the Sororitas, their abilities, the miracles, being things like Saint Celestine, could the Terminus Decree be, yes, something which basically enacts the disabling of the Golden Throne? But not to allow the Emperor to return as a perpetual to walk among humanity once again. No, perhaps disabling the Golden Throne would enable the Emperor to return, but as a god in the warp by finally releasing him fully. Now, as I say, this is quite far out there as a concept. Totally speculative, got no basis for any of it. However, it's not entirely something that has not been discussed before. Plenty of people have suggested this idea that the Emperor could be reborn in the warp itself to wage a final battle against Chaos. And given the fact that right now in M42, the Imperium is facing its worst situation regarding Chaos since the Heresy, to the point that the Grey Knights Grand Masters are actually discussing the Terminus Decree, I would personally consider it at least as an outside possibility. It would mean that the Emperor could potentially bring stability to the Imperium and perhaps help seal the rift tearing the galaxy apart. If you would enter that strange situation where the Emperor himself was actively being fueled similarly to the Chaos Gods by the thoughts, prayers, emotions, all held firmly in place by humanity's devout faith in the Emperor as a God, their certainty which cannot be broken for any reason, that is to say, their certainty in his divinity. As I say, it's very far outside as a possibility, but it's one that I like to still entertain. And then finally, I would ask you to consider a much darker possibility, because after all, this is the grim darkness of the Warhammer 40,000 universe. I put forward as being contained within the Terminus Decree, and as I've noted, most people assume that this link between the box and the throne, it must automatically be related very directly to the Emperor. But what if it were not? What if this was merely a coincidence, as I've said, and the connection is very indirect? and is simply the fact that this decree is made by the Emperor himself. This seal is simply there to provide absolute evidence that the order is from the Emperor, similar to a sigil or inquisitorial rosette. So instead I speculate the troubling idea that the Terminus Decree is not in fact the salvation for humanity, but it is, as stated, its final decree, its end. The Cabal had already suggested that allowing humanity to fall to Chaos would bring about the total annihilation of humanity and then ultimately the total end for Chaos because Chaos, it appears, often seems unable to realise that burning through humanity would ultimately weaken it significantly in the long term. In the same way that it is said that if one Chaos God would arise to a point where it could destroy the other gods, then they would all cease to function, that somehow they need each other to exist in this state of permanent turmoil, almost symbiotically. So could the Terminus Decree, in actuality, be an execution order for the entirety of humanity, a galactic scale exterminatus? He may have ultimately taken on the role of Lord Commander of the Imperium, but upon seeing the state of the Imperium when he finally returned, Gulliman could not comprehend the stagnant, backward-looking horror, He's saying only to himself, look what they've made of our dream. This bloated, rotting carcass of an empire is driven not by reason and hope, but by fear, hate, and ignorance. Better that we had all burned in the fires of Horus's ambition than live to see this. This actually echoes what the Emperor said to Vulcan. So we know that the Emperor believes that if humanity were to fall to chaos, he would rather see them all burn in a firestorm than for chaos to succeed. This is the suggestion of what the talisman was for in the first place. Now saying that, Gulliman also retained his hope. He believed that he could turn around the Imperium and save it from itself, and this is exactly what he still struggles for and battles onward across the galaxy with his new Primaris forces under his command. But still, you know what they say, hope is simply mankind's inability to accept disappointment.
no one knows what's contained within the Terminus Decree, we still do not truly know just what the Emperor is or what his complete intentions were. We assume that the Emperor loved mankind, that he wanted the best for all of their future, he wanted to protect humanity. Except that now we have the descriptions from Gulliman and Erda of the Emperor being a being. Mankind's Emperor was not warm and full of love, he was cold, calculating. So maybe it's not so much of a stretch to consider that he may have decided should humanity ever reach a point of no return, without him it would be doomed to annihilation either way. So why not deal one final destructive blow to the dark gods he fought so hard to save mankind from, but that if he could not lead humanity, then no one would. And instead, he would leave a final decree to purge the galaxy and leave mankind as nothing more than the remnant ashes of a fallen civilization, consumed in a firestorm of galactic exterminatus. <laughs>